So who, who, who can tell me about perpetual evolution? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for, for AIU? Did you have a chance to see the emails, the videos that we shared with you? Uh, anybody want to take a guess or uh, comment on what they believe perpetual evolution is? Ma'am, what's your name, please? My name is Kirsten Woodward. Kirsten, thank you so much for yeah. participating. Dr. Kirsten. <laughs> Doctor, that's right. Dr. Kirsten, that's right, um, officially. For me, perpetual evolution means that you're forever changing. You're constantly going and adapting to your environment. Absolutely. That's a 100% accurate uh, description. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you are the bravest one. You're the first, you're the first speaker, so I don't think anybody's going to forget the first participant. Um, so for AIU, that's exactly what perpetual evolution is about. The only thing that we try to do differently is sometimes perpetual evolution happens uh, without us planning for it. Uh, sometimes it happens by chance or by our circumstance. So we're forced to change. We're forced to evolve. And so the AIU program with the academic freedom that it provides uh, looks to allow you to take an active role in your own perpetual evolution. And as you know, as graduates here today know, that is the real distinction of the AIU program, that it gives you the opportunity um, to design and plan your own perpetual evolution with andragogy, with open curriculum design, and to reflect on your own life and really decide where you want to go. Do you have a path? Do you have a purpose in life? Um, and it doesn't end with your graduation. Uh, the AIU program, the reason we are bringing up perpetual evolution is because we want you to continue to pursue your learning, welcome please, and not stop. This is an ongoing change and we are counting on each of you to help achieve uh, the change that we need to see in this world. There are so many possibilities where your unique talent can make a difference and change the lives of a single person, an entire community, a country, or the world. We need only look at the UNESCO 2030 goals. We know what's at stake, we know what's needed, uh, and here in this room, we have some of the most talented individuals from around the world. More than 60 countries will be here today at the ceremony. You may be sitting next to an ex, uh, you know, an ex governor. We've had two presidents. Uh, we've had CEOs, founders of NGOs, uh, school founders, academics. And so today's opportunity in this conference is for you to share a little bit of your vision and what is to you the AIU pledge? So one of the things we ask all AIU students to take is the pledge, which is the, the AIU pledge is to use your unique and unrepeatable talents to help others around you. That doesn't mean that you have to do it yourself, but it could be something like empowering others around you. Expower, empower people in your community, uh, young people, uh, and be that change that you want to see in the world. Um, so we welcome you to the AIU family and we're so proud that you're here today. Um, after what has happened in the past three years, it's all, it almost seems like a miracle that we're all here again face to face. <laughs> uh, so we've made it. Um, we've gone through many trials and tribulations. We've adapted. Not by choice, it was a perpetual evolution that was forced upon us, uh, but uh, we're here. And um, so what I'd like to do is, this conference, the most valuable thing is not what I say. The most valuable thing is what each of you can say in 30 seconds or in 40 seconds about yourself, to introduce yourself to everyone, who you are, where you're from, and most importantly, and very concisely is, what is your pledge? What do you pledge to contribute uh, to your communities, to your country? 
maybe you've already done a contribution. Share with us what you've done so that we know and we can see as an example uh, for others to follow. So that you can know who to talk to if you have a similar project. If you would like to learn more about their success, their failure. That's why we're here today. Um, so we had a very brave volunteer. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start with you, my friend. Yes. If you can, if I can. Um, thank you. Um, could you share in a few words? Yeah, please, you can stand or it's, you can sit. It's up to you. Uh, share with us a little bit about um, what you think should be your, what could be your pledge towards AI. It could be something you've done, something you're doing, or something you would like to do. It's perfectly fine. Oh, you mean what I've started? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I'm actually sharing what I've started and what I'm, I will continue to do. Amazing. Great, great. So my name is Christopher Roger Williams. From now on, I will be called Dr. Christopher Roger Williams. Yes. <laughs> And so I have been transforming my country using theater arts and using drama as therapy. But AIU gave me that platform where I can use the arts and create a business model that represents the Caribbean, that represents the world, where I help people that counselors can't help, that therapists give up on, that um, the court system give up on, the juvenile center give up on them. I use my model to rehabilitate these persons. So AIU is a transformer, and I have transformed, and I am going to transform more people throughout the Caribbean and the world. So I use the arts as therapy. That has been my process. And that is the only university that allowed me to get to do what I want after I tried so many. This is my journey. If you want to know more, talk to me anytime. I'm right around here. Amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. Now, I only get a little concerned when the first person is so good. <laughs> but don't, don't worry. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that's, that's exactly the vision that we want to see in you, in each of you as our students, with this academic freedom to be able to find your passion, pursue your dreams. Because once you find your passion, it's no longer work. You know, when have you seen your child, your child might have a passion when they're two, when they're three, when they're four, their passions change. But when they find their passion for that moment, it's unlimited potential. Um, my friend, I'll come back, back to you, please. Thank you for participating. Uh, please, hello everybody here. And I want to thank all of you for coming here and I'm proud that I'm feeling very honored that I'm in front of you. And uh, I am a medical doctor. My name is Dr. Sufyan Muhammad. I'm coming from a poor country in the world, I can say. I'm coming from Chad. And uh, I have seen so many things in Chad which is going wrong, I can say this. We have some public health problem. We have some hygiene and uh, so many problems. And uh, I have decided because I have Always, I have been in hospital. I was helping some sick, sick uh, people and provided them some medical treatment. But I have decided to go beyond this because I have discovered that uh, public health is the way that you can, you can contribute to provide a better health for, uh, for a large number of people than just a focus and uh, treat one single one person. So that's why I have decided to join. Uh, I have even tried to join a, a Masters of Public Health College, but it was so expensive for me. But I've got an, a scholarship in AIU, and uh, it has been very affordable to me. And I have uh, decided to learn English very hard, and I've joined this uh, prestigious university and I've done well, and I've been always trained by beautiful and I most respected people. I cannot, I cannot uh, forget to mention the name of the wonderful person one whose name is Dr. Edward Lambert. I, I see him as like a role model for me, and I'm going to, to, to keep on following his steps as it's possible, and I hope that I can provide more and help those, those people who who are, who are in need of, my, of that knowledge that I have been learning in AIU. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much for sharing. So part of, part of what we're trying to do with the pledge is to have the ideal of how you want to impact one of the 2030 goals, if possible, so that you can join that inertia, that momentum happening around the world. And number two, find a way that you can measure your own progress. Because if we have a goal, but we don't have a way to measure our progress, then it becomes very ephemeral. So to achieve the goal, we want to try to define how many people we're going to impact, how we're going to impact, uh, and try to find a measuring stick so that we can see whether we're on the right track or not. Madame, Thank please you. join us. Introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Hi. Aisha from Nigeria. I'm a physician by training and uh, I specialize in public health. So for me, one of the main things is that I come from the northern part of Nigeria. That's where you have some of the most vulnerable people, particularly women and children. So in 2021, after I started my degree with the AIU, I started a non-governmental organization on women and youth empowerment because from experience, doing some research in some of these communities before I formed the NGO, you find out that they say, well, we do know we need to go to the hospital, but if you can't afford it, what do you do? So I think for me, that was a calling to start a non-governmental organization. What we do, we do support women who are, have small businesses as well as women farmers so that they can have access to credit, which ordinarily they wouldn't have had access to. And not only in funding, but also to reach out to them with basic health information. So we started off with a training of the volunteer village community members so that they recognize early some of these diseases and they give direct and good advice to people so that they can assess healthcare. So that's just the beginning of my journey, and I hope that I continue with that. I particularly liked the AIU method. It was flexible. I got to choose what I wanted to study. I, it was beyond thinking out of the box. It wasn't a didactic thing, no. It was more of life-changing. So this is this, this is this, this is this, but then why should we care? Why should we impact? Why should we have be? So I think one of the most important things for me is that it exemplified be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Madame. Thank you for participating. My name is Edna Mkurajija from Harare, Zimbabwe. I've been in the financial services sector now for over two decades. And after 15 years of being employed, you know, climbing up the corporate ladder, you know, starting as a graduate trainee to managing director, I realized that, you know, in Zimbabwe, there are very few women who are financially independent. If you look at the statistics, we have 51% women. But out of the 51%, only 14%, according to the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, they did a study, only 14% wow. evade access to financial services. So I've started a credit union bank in Zimbabwe where we are helping women to be financially independent. We are helping women to have multiple streams of income. And studying at Atlantic International University, it helped me because of the flexibility. My schedule is very hectic. But because of the flexibility, because I was able to choose you know, courses, modules which were relevant to me, it helped me to be able to achieve, you know, not only get the license in Zimbabwe, but we now have the license for Zambia. We're also working on UK, and we're also working on having a credit union bank here in USA, helping women to be financially independent. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. So there we have two situations where we have uh, loans, credit facilities, an NGO. AIU is here to help you. Whether you're a student or an alumni, it doesn't matter. If you need help to draft a proposal, 
for a grant or for a project, please send us what you're planning to do and we'd be happy to look at the structure of it. Make sure that it's structured uh, correctly. It's not that hard at all to do it. Once you have the idea, we can take the idea and you know, experts who have been writing grants can help you structure it correctly uh, so that you can have success as you have had. I'm, I'm sure it was a learning process to draft the proposal, yes? Okay. Um, Madame in the back, please join us. <laughs> May I go on stage? So yes, please. Because I could hardly see those speaking yes. just now, so I thought. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm Maxine Tio from Singapore. Do you remember my name is Maxine, the vaccine? I'm your booster oh. shot. So, yes. <laughs> So I think I'm, one of the things that I love about AIU education is the unique way of the thesis. You have many options, right? So on that note, instead of writing a traditional thesis, I wrote a book. And the book is my topic, which is something that I want to value add to society, which is to bridge the relationships between the East and the West, as well as across different generations. So my book is Secret Manual of the Engaging Warrior, Winning oh. Strategies to Boost Your generational intelligence at the workplace. So I hope to also share with everyone that it's not an easy journey. I met my fellow Singaporean there. Hi, Wilson. Yes, we're a tiny little island, but we do hope to make a big impact on the rest of the world. And today, please, uh, we really hope we can continue that relationship. And I love what you said. I think one of the beauties of tertiary education is the alumni, right? where we keep connected, where we value add one another, we bridge all the gaps, and we make the world a better place. Thank yes. you, everyone. I'm Maxine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, wow, okay. Whoa. Okay, that's the end of the conference. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, wow. Well, Singapore is an amazing, amazing, amazing country, Singapore. Let me tell you, it's a beacon of freedom. It's a beacon of prosperity. Uh, so, I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago was not the case. So, an incredible uh, rise. Um, let, come on, my friend. I got you next. Thank you for joining us. Are you going to go on stage? No, I'm oh. tall enough. Okay. <laughs> Please, sorry, no offense. Okay. Is that, a, is that working? Or? Yeah, you're good at that distance. All right, so I just had to take this moment to say hi to everyone. Uh, we are blessed today to be achieving what we achieve and what we are doing best. Um, what, I want, what I came out here to say that we have the opportunity to give a chance. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'll just go ahead and do this when we finish. We're going to have another conference, so if you want to start from the beginning, you can come. If start you over again. One, that's fine, you can join. <laughs> okay, come to the second one. I'll just sorry, introduce go ahead, myself go ahead. again. Okay, sorry so uh, my, name, my name is uh, Fadi Abu Aita. I am from Bethlehem, Palestine, the birthplace of Jesus Christ the Lord. Don't worry, um, we're going to have another I mean. conference. <laughs> So, this already started. so um, you can, you can I, I just want to tell you guys, I was a little kid and I had no opportunity or no chance whatever to go for higher education or any education at all. When, when I had the chance to meet the, uh, one of the um, Italian um, ministers that he gave me the chance to go to Switzerland and start the pursuit of my education. And I believe we have Swiss joining us today. Hi there. And so, therefore, I finished my study in Switzerland, after that England, after that Germany, and here we are today. I completed my PhD two years ago, and today I'm celebrating the post-doctorate in business management. And what I wanted to say, we have the opportunity to give someone else another opportunity. We have the chance, I have the chance at least, to start promoting peace where I live. It's what we miss. And thank you. And this, is, this has been the uh, toughest um, missions of all time since we uh, live among uh, the multi-religion uh, 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 co countries and cities where we have the Muslims, Ju Judaism, and the Christians in, uh, in Bethlehem, in, in Jerusalem in specifically. And after that, if I can just 
reflect or implement a piece in, in my area, then we need to focus on solving one of, uh, one of the most important uh, articles of the UNESCO, which is the um, hunger in Africa. And this is what we should be focusing at. And I believe in every one of you and in every soul of us can help um, implement at least one of those um, movement, I would say, to, to have a better, brighter future to all of us. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sorry for the interruption. <laughs> so there's another one of the UNESCO 2030 goals, uh, peace. So there's 17 of them, and we can all contribute. Now, it doesn't have to be a grand, you know, uh, multi-million dollar project or, or, or a new school or a new university or, or a new hospital. It can be the small things that make the big difference. A teacher, we once had a teacher who said, what we've done is we've empowered our students in our country, instead of importing the, the food for the aqu aquaculture, for the fish, they began to produce their own fish in the country. And this was a project for high school. Imagine what an impact that teacher had on that group of 15, 20 students in her class. Yeah. So at any level, we can have a huge impact. And I would ask if we can limit, you know, since you're thinking about it, try to limit to 40 seconds to one minute because we have a lot of participants who want to share their experience. So like, uh... You're, it's live, go ahead. Okay, now from what I can see, I came from a background, 40 years of experience in auditing, consulting, all of this. But what I gained from my uh, study in auditing, it was precious. I would, I never thought that I would get so, such experience. I want to go to the most crucial point now, after we finish, everyone will get his degree by mail and <laughs> khalas, finish. What, the question, what should we do after? I can see from all of us, we came from troubled countries where is no human rights, no women rights, except of course, our beautiful lady from <laughs> Singapore. She enjoys everything there, but for that all of us know. I think you do agree with me. Now, what we have to think, what have to do tomorrow? Of course, in coordination under the umbrella of the university. What I suggest, doctor, yes. to create a group, okay? A group that every graduate be a member where we can talk, talk to each other. I have heavy experience in auditing, consulting, visibility study, you have experience in, uh, in, 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 in I don't know what. Let's, let's exchange those experiences together for free, of course. And that's what I said to the university, that I am ready to do whatever it requires from me to help, okay? Especially Africa is the future of the world. Absolutely. The future, you have to know that 60% of the land, land suitable to, to grow, to feed the, pop, the, the, whole, the global people is in Africa. Absolutely. And of course, I don't want to talk too much about the mining. Thank you very much. Thank I you have, so much. I, now we have, to, we have to fit this, my suggestion. Yes, no, definitely, number yeah. one, your suggestion is well taken because we have AIU Link. However, we're improving AIU Link. Each of you have shared by email on the platform some of your achievements. You've shared some of your knowledge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those together. We're gonna co connect AIU Link, which is the social media platform, with what you've shared with us. That way when you search for students in your country, in your city, in your major, in your areas, you'll be able to identify them based on what you've accomplished, your, uh, because each of you shared, I have a sheet here that shows each of you, even the ones that haven't spoken today, uh, <laughs> even the ones that haven't spoken today, look at these achievements. There's three for each student. 
accomplishment one, two, and three. We don't have time to go through all these accomplishments here. But we do have time to search for each other, as you, as you suggested, yes, and I collaborate know. with each so other. So we can talk to each other. If she needs something that she knows that I can provide, okay, be able to talk to each other. Absolutely. Exactly. Madame, let me and go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome. Thank you for this opportunity um, to meet all of you. It's a great day for me today. My name is Pumzile. I'm from the kingdom of Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland. Um, my country is warm with friendly people. But what is most important for me is this you educate a man, you educate an individual. You educate a woman, you educate a nation. Yes. So that's my motto. I'm from the education background. I've taught um, at a high school level for 18 years. And then I went up the ladder to be in the Ministry of Education where I'm now in policy making. Now, for me, I'm grateful to AIU, more especially because it has opened my eyes. It has made me see from a different light that I can make a difference in the world, but starting from my very own community. The challenges that we have in our country and in most parts of the world, in Africa, it's actually lack of education, lack of quality education, which is part and parcel of SDG, and it's SDG 4. So for me, what I've done, having started this program two years ago, three years ago, third, um, I started a small NGO in my community. From my pocket, wow. I asked my husband to help, so it is going with about 50 children wow. that I'm supporting to eat. Like every weekend, we are there to give them food, Nourish. bread, juice, whatever we can give. But what is most important is to share knowledge with them, is to share information. The Bible says, my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. So if we empower our children, to have knowledge, then we empower the nation, then we become free, then we become powerful, then we become educated, and we love each other. Thank you, AIU. Thank you, and congratulations on NGO. Madam, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Natalie Irving Mattox from Kingston, Jamaica. Welcome. Um, good to be here. I am married with one daughter. I have to big up my husband, who has been so instrumental and supportive even for me to complete and be here today. I um, just want to share quickly that um, when I started AIU, I actually also started an organization, but I've worked in public health for 20 years. So I've, I was the deputy representative for ITEC, which, which is the International Training and Education Center for Health, Caribbean program, and they are based in the University of Washington in Seattle. So I started the Caribbean arm of that in 2020. And through AIU, I developed my grant, and I'm now receiving some excellent grant for public health programs in Jamaica. My recent one I received um, when I developed my thesis was 2.5 million US, and we've been doing several work in terms of access to treatment and care for chronic diseases, HIV, emerging diseases, COVID, etc. So I work with um, key population groups, you know, including people, se um, sex workers, those who are marginalized, men who have sex with men, and I ensure that they have access to quality health care. I also focus a lot on um, older population, you know, those who are living with chronic diseases and cannot access healthcare. I also train medical doctors, nurses, etc. And this was 
you know, with the instrumental support of the Atlantic International University. So I'm grateful and I'm happy to be part could of you, the program. Could you imagine that level of grant at the beginning of your journey? Did you ever imagine that was going to happen? No, no, I didn't. And I was a little bit apprehensive at first, you know, to take on such major grants. But then I said, I've been supporting this program in the US for other universities for a while. And so when I started and, you know, I, I went through with my, uh, my, my advisor, yes. Um, you know, and he said, listen, you know, you're on the right path. They supported me with the development of the proposal, etc. And so it was just really mind-blowing for me to receive my first Fantastic. grant. Fantastic. Grants, governments, NGOs, they're looking for people like you on the ground with knowledge who can make a real impact. A lot of times the funds go a different way, and by the time they get to the ground, already half of it is lost. Yes. So they're looking for people, they're looking for people like you that are there that can make an impact directly. So right. thank and you so I, much for I sharing. I agree, and I think small population um, like Jamaica, we do not get a lot of that support in terms of having the capacity in country to manage these large grants. Yes. So now having an organization like mine, the funding is actually coming directly to us rather than going through other entities so to us. So I'm happy for that. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. I um, want to say thanks to all the graduates that are here. You're so beautiful. I can see it from your eyes. You're expecting your degree very soon. I want to say thank you for coming. I'm one of the graduates. Uh, actually, I live in the UK, uh, but I've suffered a lot. So I decided not to suffer again. And, uh, <laughs> and I thought taking this uh, doctor in, in uh, business administration as a pathway where I said bye-bye to poverty. And when I started the course, I knew that there was a part, a part, when you want to say bye-bye to poverty, you must have to take a pathway. You have to start putting the grounds to say bye-bye. I don't want to see you any longer. And that's exactly what I did. As we speak, I have 50 hectares of land in Cameroon. I'm from Cameroon, sorry. My name is Edison Awa, I'm sorry to. Welcome, Edison, thank yeah. you. So I, I, I just started with 50 hectares of land to plant palm oil. Not knowing how many people I'm going to employ, but just that vision of, because I've been a project manager with Heracles Farms, what I've heard about it. I was a project manager in Cameroon with Heracles Farms. It's actually a company that, plan, that is actually involved in palm oil. So that's where I got my inspiration. Uh, inspiration. Huh? What? Yeah. No, I didn't have it. For, I got it directly from, from, they employed me from Sweden. I went and I had the project in my country. So that's where I got the inspiration. To be, to be honest with you, very short period, I've already employed 50, 50 employees. So you could imagine that. That's a real impact. You yeah. can measure the impact. Exactly. The so, you know, you start that way and less than no time. And I'm looking to employ about a thousand, to be very sincere with you, because the job is really healthy, and I believe that it takes five years for actually the palm oil to start producing. If I can only employ already 50, 50 people that is still nursery, yeah. you could imagine when it shall be, be ready in, in uh, five years, how it's going to look like. So I'm just trying to share this, especially with, I'm very happy with the idea that you brought. If we can actually link ourselves just through WhatsApp, it, it will give us tremendous exchange. That is the fastest way I've seen people exchange knowledge, through WhatsApp. It's a group that if we are really interested, we can just maybe create a WhatsApp group, call it the alumni of 2023. Sure. And then from there, we can exchange knowledge. Somebody might be in, in uh, everywhere in the world. We can change ideas and we can, make, we can just say bye-bye to poverty. Um, I strongly believe that. So. The goal I'm saying today is just say bye-bye to poverty. Yes. Let it not be, and then refuse to even enter second class. I said from today I'm going to enter only first class. <laughs> and it will be possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please, my friend. Thank you. It's a lovely day. And uh, my name is Jonathan Ogaokuru. I'm from Nigeria. 
Welcome, uh, Nigerian case is always a peculiar case. Mandela said that if Nigeria could change, the whole of Africa could really change. Even when he was in prison, and it really meant true because that is a country with a lot of wealth and ability to do a lot of things. But unfortunately, things were not really going well. So I started a career, and I started by saying, the pharma industry was really coming in. Who has not taken a drug here? Who has not taken a drug? Raise up your hand if you are sick. Or if you have never been sick, can you raise up your hand? Do you take pharmaceutical drug? Yes, nobody. Everybody take it here. But how do you differentiate a fake product and a substandard product? How can you differentiate that? Mm. It's very difficult. Yeah. We're only buying from the pharmacy and we take. So we realize also that most of the drugs are being imported into Africa. And when we started this journey as a public health, I made up a point that I'm going to change part of Nigeria and Africa. And today, God has made it that I've been able to contribute so much to the raise of pharmaceutical facilities in West Africa. It can be attested to at anywhere and at every point in time by ensuring that quality assured pharmaceutical products are produced because you cannot get health until you take a particular quality assured pharmaceutical product. And in doing that, for example, a new facility in Liberia. Who is in Liberia? We're able to build a new facility in Liberia. Yes, 21st of this month was when we opened it to make sure that we counterfeit and also produce local affordable pharmaceutical product. We had another one in Burkina Faso. And just recently, two years ago, and we started that, and today we have a new facility. In Ghana, we have changed so many facilities in Ghana. In Nigeria, we have actually advanced some of these kind of facilities in the place. So we are on work health space trying to ensure that things are done. And they start from basic design. Everything was imported. Now you can Yeah, everything is imported. But as we speak right now, we manufactured this. And Africans say that 67% of pharmaceutical products actually come from Nigeria. And some doesn't even have a pharmaceutical companies as we speak in West Africa or in Africa. And they're coming from some of these places. How do people get health if we cannot be able to do that? So I now came in with that. The only way to do this and to convince people how to do it is to make sure that we have what we call a strategic plan management. There's nothing on earth you can do without a strategy. And there's nothing you can do on earth without a good planning. And there's nothing to do if you don't have a good management to ensure that this thing actually gets to the end of it and achieve some of these things. So in doing that, this has helped me in my career, in my development of some of these things. And I give glory to AIU. After selecting this project, I can see that I walk into any managing director, I walk into any organization, I say this is good for your country and people listen and before we now know we celebrate it all through the effort of AIU. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations. My friend Colin, please. Thank you for participating. Sure. Good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Colin Ilgosain. I did my DBA with AIU, and it was a great experience. Thank you. Right? They're interactive, the way they allow you to provide and supply your information, it was really innovative, and it really helped me. And one of the things we want to do, my um, DBA, my, um, my thesis was on was helping the migrants from Venezuela, ah. especially the women migrants as well, because um, of the problems Venezuela face in our region, there is a large population of Venezuelans migrating to Trinidad and Tobago, where I'm from, right? In fact, the whole Caribbean, they are rushing out of Venezuela. Yeah. And when they reach in these countries, they are taken advantage of. And that is a terrible thing. And we need to train them. Um, we need to get them to understand our language, our culture, and empower them to get the proper jobs and the facilities and access it. And that is what we want to do. So I want to be short. I don't want to be long. So I want to thank yeah, you, and I want to thank everybody here, and I hope we enjoy the day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Colin. And we, we would be very happy, Colin, to support your effort uh, to do any of that. We have a lot of ways to do that. 
We have the, of course, webinars if you want to participate and get your message out. Uh, we can share it on our blog, we can share it on our YouTube channel, we can share it on our Facebook page. If you're looking for eyes to see what your project's about, um, you know, we have over 1.1 million uh, followers on Facebook. So if you have a project that you would like to get awareness of, please contact me, ricardo at AIUEDU. That's my email, like my first name, ricardo at AIUEDU. Let me know. What you, what you would like to do, and we can work with our team to prepare your message, to help you draft your message, or to use the message you already have, get it to more people. Um, of course, join us as part of Perpetual Evolution in our live classes. We're doing uh, 10 live classes every week in all kinds of topics, you know? Um, so keep coming, keep participating. As alumni, you can continue to come to all the live classes. We'd love to See you there. Thank you. We have time for one more. Can you repeat the email? Ricardo, my first name. Ricardo at AIU.edu. All right, we have time for more. We have time for more then. Okay, Madame, and then gentlemen, and then Madame. Yes. Oh, I don't need that. Okay, okay. Okay, so. But um, I've attended one, and I found it to be uh, very interesting. And I keep looking to try to attend more of them that will fit into the schedule. But yeah. it was it was a great it thank was you. Great, and there was one that I missed. So I was like, oh, I missed. You it. know what? I apologize. We're a little bit behind, but every single one of those live classes is archived. Okay. And in the AIU Merlin Media Center. Uh, you can look for it, so if, you, okay. if there's a topic that was psychology or whatever the topic is, you can search for it. There's a tab for live classes. We've already uploaded 70 of them, but we have a backlog of like 40 that we haven't uploaded. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Is this working? if you working? haven't had a chance to attend one or go look at one, please do. I mean, the, the wealth of knowledge that was in it, it was fascinating. And plus, in the end, they had time for the Q&A. Thank you. And so, of course, they can get even more Thank you so much. We hope to keep seeing you there. Hi, um, my name is Cindy Batesh. I'm having uh, today my BA for cybersecurity. Excellent, very, very Thank highly you. needed. Yeah, um, I just can't believe I'm here. I, I really, uh, it's been 10 years of trying to get my degree and because of life, wow. it's, uh, you know, t taking some courses and that's, you know, life happening in the middle, then going back. But this morning I, I wrote a, a note to, to myself from 10 years ago, you know, uh, it said, thank you for believing in yourself. And that was just very, <laughs> thank you. It just, opened my eyes that if, if I believe in myself, if you believe in yourself, there's just so much that you can do. Um, I have a six-year-old, and this is just something that I, I will tell her about how many times I just thought I was not going to be able to finish, uh, how many times I just doubted myself, and in the end, like, I'm here. Well, we're all here. and. I just feel so, so, so thankful. So thankful with, with AIU for this opportunity, so. Well, your yeah. daughter, your daughter, when she sees your success, when she sees your happiness, you're gonna transmit to her, to her that 10 times more than anything you can tell her. So just by seeing your success, that's the best thing that, that, that yeah. that's the best example. Thank She's you so much for sharing. She's truly my inspiration. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, we right. can do me if can can we if we can keep it to less than a minute, we can get everybody in. All right? I guess I'm the standard barrier. 
<laughs> uh, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, I'm James G., now Dr. James G. I come from Winona, Mississippi, and I'm here today to let you know a little bit about what I wrote about. Uh, AIU brought me in with uh, ABT. I was already done with all the writing mostly, but I had to write my thesis and proposal and then dissertation. And Dr. Lambert and I had a great discussion about how do career academies prepare students for the workforce. And when the young lady stood up from Jamaica, it made me realize education and training is a pet peeve that we need to instill in people. Currently now, I teach JROTC students and prepare them for the military, uh, the workforce, education, et cetera. And I've done that for quite a few years, almost nine years. And I've also taught as a college professor and teaching people for the workforce. So I would like to integrate with you all and combine so we can become a better workforce and help people in different countries, not only in America. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a blessing to be here yes. today with, with all of you. It's been a, a long journey, but it's been a worthwhile journey. I'm just glad I'm here. Um, my brother in the gray, in the gray suit at the back. Ah. My brother, I'm just saying to you, I saw the light. I left the UK 30 years ago. My sister in the red, I live in Jamaica. I live in Mandeville, Jamaica. Ah. Now, small businesses are the backbone to many of our economies. In Jamaica, we don't have huge factories, we don't have multinationals, we have small businesses. So what do I do? I help small businesses to grow. I help them to become profitable and sustainable. I also focus on young people. Nowadays, it's not difficult to start a job, especially if your business model involves starting something online. So I literally search out young people who are unemployed, and I help them start their businesses online. Wow. My name is Hazel Wright O'Connor, now Dr. Ah. Hazel Wright O'Connor. Thank you. Mshanga Jennifer is my name. I'm from a country called Zambia. Uh, there's the mighty Victoria Falls. I'm here just to discuss issues of mental health. Mental health, yes. Uh, yes, uh, because in my country, these are conversations that are difficult conversation to talk about. When I am thinking of counseling, I think it's for the insane or it borders around HIV and AIDS. So as we continue on the various path, my path is to ride on the successes of all of you because actually, I got motivated when she said, it's been 10 years. I was like, okay, it's been from 2014. I've been in graduation mode. Uh. <laughs> yes, I am supposed to be graduating at another level, but I'm only doing my undergrad now because I've been failing to clear finance from 2014. Life happened, but the truth is I'm here just to get motivated. How have others done it? The fact that you did it, I can do it, but remember mental health, especially for Africa. Africa, yes, the future is Africa, but there are a lot of underlying factors, especially that we think, let's take the finance to Africa. What we need are interventions that are going to address, especially for women. Women will not leave their house to go and seek the services just as simple counseling. You have to drag a woman out of their home. That's considered so taboo. that's my passion and that's my path. I do not know if I'll reach to form a big organization, but I just want to add my voice to anybody that is advocating to address issues of mental health. They are deep now, especially after the COVID era, we have to adapt, but the adapting part is not easy. I have suffered depression, especially when I couldn't. But when I speak to somebody about depression, they'll say, after all you've been to school, I'm like, it's not about being to school. It's about to have the courage to take the step. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Good afternoon, fellow students. Good afternoon. I am called William Wilson Nokrat from Uganda. I'm a teacher by profession. I just come here to say I learned quite a lot from this university. And what touched me most is uh, in Uganda, like in most African countries, special needs education is not going on well. It is going on well in your school, in your area, put up your hand and I see. So a group of human beings are being marginalized. That are people with disabilities. I decided to break the net and sow out that, to break the nest and sow out that things can happen. I've been a member of parliament for 15 years. I have experience in making law. So let me go back to school and learn more so that we put this into practice. Right as I speak now, my vision is to build a school for deaf children. I want to build a child that will be a silent compound where deaf children and hearing children will be learning and everything will be done in sign language. <laughs> so I will come to you to help me how to develop those the grant applications. Absolutely. So that we see what we can do. Yes. We have been left behind, and I want to tell you. And we say, when I, when I started this course, my children were complaining. What does this old boy want to do again? <laughs> I told them, I'm going back to school. I will study until I get a signed post showing that there's no more school behind. <laughs> then I will come back. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. Congratulations. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I'm Suleiman Ba. I'm from Liberia. Suleiman, welcome. Thank you. And. Um, you know, it's a wonderful place, this planet we live, and I'm doing renewable and sustainable energy, right? Um, every day we cry about world hunger. You know, there is not enough food, people are starving, but that's not the fact. The challenge is we are not sustainable. Yeah. If you see 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted in worldwide yearly between the US and Europe alone, that is enough to feed the whole world. You know, so what I am doing now and what I've been doing, um, not just on energy which we need, but also how can we be sustainable in everything we do. The way we produce food, the way we use energy. You know, just simple gestures. Even today, when you go back to your hotel room, when you're brushing your teeth, make sure you just turn the tap off. That little quantity of water you save can take us a long way. So I developed uh, and drafted a project um, it's still in the initial stages. I submitted to my organization, okay. and they have given me green light. It's wow. a 1.5 million project. It's wow. going to be implemented in South Sudan. And yes, we are going to try to see how we can provide solar energy solar. and electricity to, to the schools within some of the communities that are out of the, the city. Wow. So I thank you, and thank you, and what you, you know, AIU, you are a uh, you paradigm. Thank you. Imagine a vision, right? Um, in a world where now everything is about to become virtual. You are in the lead. Yes, thank you so, so much. And, and along what you were saying with the yeah. food, it's unbelievable that 60% uh, of the land that is used for farming is used to feed animals. True. Not humans. Not humans. So we say there's not enough arable land. That's yeah. not true. true. There's more than enough. It's just that when we eat meat, in order to produce that meat, that animal has to, per has to consume 10 times more than we would have to consume if we ate 
the vegetables or the fruits or the, the, the you know, yeah. the food from the land directly ourselves. Yes. So there's a huge waste. Too By much a waste. Of 10. Too much waste. We, we have yeah. to be more conscious of Too the amount much of waste. meat that we. And I'm going to push that. Thank you, okay? my friend. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Last person, my friend, come on. <laughs> I can't, I can't leave you out. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Flavien, and I'm coming... A little bit louder, a little bit louder. Because they can hear you in the microphone, but not here. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Flavien. I'm coming from Canada, originally from Cameroon. And then today, I'm here to thank IU to give me the possibility to uh, uh, complete with my study. And then uh, I, I created two companies. One, uh, the first company is uh, uh, companies working, it's a consulting company. So I do help people, help many people to their financial services because my background is in finance. And then the second one, I create an ONG, NGO that you can help people. So I'm very glad to be here today and it's my pleasure to, be a doc to get my doctorate today. Thank you. Thank you for contributing. And as a last, I would like everyone here, if you can, if you're willing, to take the AIU pledge with me. So if you can raise your hand if you'd like to take the AIU pledge. I pledge to use my unique and unrepeatable ability and talent. I pledge to use my unique ability and talent. To help the world and others around me to prosper. In a, in a sustainable way. This I promise. This is I pledge. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>